So, um, I dropped out of uni. Yeah. Salutation will come in, how you guys doing? It's been a while. I didn't plan on this video being one of those. It's been a while videos, but it's been a while. I've been saying it's a while quite a bit now. <laughs> As you guys have read from the title, I've dropped out of uni. So initially I didn't want to get into uni, but I had like a bet with my film studies teacher who was like, you know what, Abdin, you don't want to get into uni, but I want you to get into uni. So just apply for it. And if you get in, yay, I win. But if you don't, then so what, you win. I didn't want to get into uni because of finances, basically. I thought it was going to be too expensive, and it was. One of my biggest fears was, what if I get my student loan late? You know, I'd be screwed because I wouldn't have much money to go on. And my biggest fear at that time, it occurred, you know, it happened. My student loan came in uh, four or five months late. So at that time, when I was in uni, I did more shifts at work, and I was also doing my lessons and stuff. So I was kind of struggling with that. So I like to say I was keeping my balance, but I was like going on and off, in and out, in terms of like um, being studious. But I, I, th I thought I managed to catch up with uni work and also like job as well. When I went into year two, it turns out they said my year one I failed it because I forgot to hand in an assignment so then I got told you know what just do year two and hand in that assignment and then you pretty much go with that and I was like that's what I did so in year two I did that and I enjoyed it my year one I found it very slow only because a lot of the equipment I wanted to use I wasn't allowed to use it because I'm in year one even though at work at the same time we were using like a DSLR camera and I know how to use it but in uni we'd have to be in year two or year three or something and turns out then when I did finish my year two my work in year two was invalid because I had to redo the all of year one so for year three they just told me to have to do year one again i was like no i'm not gonna have that you know so at that time as well so i was like you know what uni is not working out for me and i'm not enjoying it as much so i was like okay cool uh, what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna help out at home get a job and you know help the family survive and when i was going back and forth from uni to berlin as well i realized my family were kind of struggling really struggling in terms of bills and all the letters and uh, organization and everything and it turns out there was letters from like 2014 and stuff which i had to organize so after i came back from uni i pretty much like two grand or so saved and i was gonna start a wedding for business with that because I just needed a, a, a bit more money and then I could have just started it off but uh, the bills got a wee bit too much and I remember we had this um, big bill that we had to pay and it was quite a lot and I remember asking mum oh is um, Bicep or is Afa gonna help pay this and she was just like no and then I was like D -d -d do you want me to pay that and she just went yes and I was like oh okay cool so I helped pay the bills with the filmmaking money, which I had planned for my equipment and stuff like that. So then I got a job and I was like, okay, I need to gather money again to buy my filmmaking equipment and help pay the bills as well. After I left uni, I couldn't get a job. It was like a 100% commission job, which was selling internet on the street. Then um, I left that job because um, I wasn't enjoying it as much and I found it like they pushed you to sell to the customers and like some customers I didn't like pushing their sale, you know? And then I got a second job selling gas and electric on the streets and high streets and in shopping centers. And with that, let's say I had a, um, a disagreement with the C or the marketing company. He basically gave me an ultimatum between filmmaking, videography, and sales and stuff. And even though they shouldn't have been a choice because, you know, I was doing like filmmaking YouTube videos on the weekends, it wasn't really interfering with my work. And you know what, I chose filmmaking. So I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna leave that work. So at the moment now, I'm currently unemployed, which is a bit scary because I'm just trying to get videography jobs whenever I can, which is, you know, it's scary, but it is what it is. You guys may have noticed that I've taken new pictures, which is on my Facebook, on my Twitter, a bit on my Instagram, which is like um, all these like professional like, portfolio pictures. That's because I recently joined a background acting agency. So what they do basically, they help you find roles in the background just as an extra working in like Coronation Street or like Hollyoaks, stuff like that. Now it's just pretty much a waiting game. So speaking of a wee bit of acting, I also did like a, a little part of acting in our second year uni film. I've just got a one line, that's all it is. But my good friend Joe, he's in it, Joe Davis, you guys know him. So he's acting, he's the main protagonist. So um, here's a little snippet of the scene that I'm in. We ask for bail on three counts. One, he's 17 years of age. Two, he is a young man of impeccable character. No previous convictions whatsoever. Number three, he handed himself into the police station. He gave a full and frank statement. That's the only reason he stands before you today. Yes. We oppose bail because of the serious nature of the charge. Bail refused. We are remanded here in custody for two weeks. Then you will go to Royal Crown Court. Take him down.
So as I mentioned before, uh, what I'm doing now, I'm just doing like a lot of freelance stuff. I pretty much like shoot whatever I can, whoever gives me the work. Either it'll be like wedding videos or photography. I made a, an advert for my mate's clothing line called Conscious Gums. I'm quite proud of the advert to be fair because I had to just work with natural lighting and here's the advert that um, I shot. Yeah, yeah, ha, why do we kill for money? Why don't we feed the poor? Why y'all we fine for freedom? We don't feel it no more. Who knew profits the profits generate for war? This generation is crazy, look at the sign to show. Yeah, now we're just waiting on the revolution. Stay conscious, dress well, that's the resolution. Nobody can be yourself better than you can, so be the best shooter you can be. Silence it down. Yeah, now we're just waiting on the revolution. Stay conscious, dress well, that's the resolution. But yeah, no, that, uh, that was pretty much a lot of the people there are just uh, my friends. I like the way it looks and I'm just going to add that onto my portfolio in terms of videography as well. So you're probably wondering what I'm working on at the moment in terms of like um, acting or if I'm filmmaking and stuff. And the past few weeks, months, where, how, however long it's been, I've been working on my friend Patricia's uh, documentary. It's about uh, medical tattoos and how people have either scars and how they decide to use uh, tattoos in a medical way to help their self-confidence and to help their mentality and stuff. It's like the most complex thing that you're looking at ever. Open your eyes a bit more. <laughs> That's cute. I've also been working on Samuel J. Day's film for uni, which is uh, called Hype. I don't really want to. I, I don't think I can really say much about it because it's like an intrigue and it's a bit of a mystery. But you guys know Samuel. He's the one that directed Breathe, which is the short film adaptation of The Born Identity, which I helped uh, co-direct and also edit and uh, shot a bit of it as well. But yeah, I'm looking forward to to the films that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, but massive congratulations to my friend Valerie, Valerie Meller, but now Valerie Evans. Um, she just got married recently on April first, which is quite funny because she got married on April Fool's Day. <laughs> Now that I'm saying uh, marriage is a joke, uh, no, not, not that I meant it like that, because her marriage isn't a joke, it's, it's a serious marriage, because they love each other, and like, stuff, and, you know what, I'm just gonna shush now, um, yeah, hmm. <laughs> all in all, like, a lot of people, or a lot of my close friends, or people that I get close to, they tend to say, why are you like, happy or cheerful all the time, you know? And that's pretty much because I've pretty much been through like a lot of shit. Like I'll be honest with you guys, I've been through like a lot of stuff. I don't really talk on YouTube about or put it on public. You know, a lot of people, they tend to compare people's lives on social media. They tend to focus on someone's highlight of their life, which is an edited version, you know, of that moment of happiness to their realistic situation that they're in, which is, it might be depressing or it might be dismal or something. And that's what they're focusing on. That's what the comparison is where they don't realize that the person that they're looking looking up to can also have the same kind of you know reality set for them and it's just like the same as them it's just that they just put up the happy moments in their life on social media a lot of people tend to do that but yeah i tend to get asked you know how am i joyous or happy all the time it's because i've been through a lot of shit you know when i was selling um talk talk on the street i used to get a lot of people being racist towards me i used to get a lot of people like swearing at me using profanity towards me and like growing up in berlin as well you get a lot of people throwing racism towards you i've been raised pretty much like on benefits and everything so i'm used to going through a lot of hardship so whatever like the world may throw at me i'm quite happy one of my favorite people in the world my favorite authors in the world who like pretty much made up my childhood jk rowling she says rock bottom became the solid foundation on which i rebuilt my life you know which which i completely agree with you know that's that's what i truly believe in the fact that if you want to achieve greatness or succeed in life you are going to go through so much tribulation and struggle it's one of those things you know you can't really appreciate life if you've been through so much negativity you know that's the reason why if it may seem like my videos are inconsistent is because that's what's been happening in my life like a really quick brief version of it um all jam-packed into one video i'm really excited i'm looking forward to the future and don't let it um hold you back you know the fact that you might be going through a, a lot right now because life is like a bow and arrow pretty much it's like you know a bow and arrow sometimes you know with life you have to go backwards before you go forwards and shoot life right in the groin i don't know why you would shoot a, a life in the groin why would you be obsessed with groins for <laughs> shut up I don't know, what? <laughs> you know what, I'm just gonna stop it right there anyway because I think I've been talking too much, but you know what, it's good. It's good to make a YouTube video again because I've not made a YouTube video in, in ages. 
Um, add me on Snapchat, guys, because I realize I tend to post on Snapchat more than I post on YouTube only because I find it a bit more comfortable, the fact that I don't need to edit the content. Sometimes I post funny little um, anecdotes and stuff on Snapchat, which you guys can look forward to. And also check out my second channel because I post some of my Snapchat storylines there. So if you guys missed it, be sure to check that out. But I guess that's all for now. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Remember, geeks are cool, so love, peace, and feel shindor. Okay. And then she goes to me, right? Are you single? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm single. Um, are, are, are you? So I didn't know what to do or what to say. It was super.